So, um, my name is Matthias. I work for Xenic Labs. And the last couple of years, I've been working on open challenge SDs. So this is a new storage class of, this, of storage that we're gonna that we're pushing into like a big ecosystem. And basically, what it does is that it takes the FTL of an SSD and moves it into the host. And this is probably gonna be a bit more technical uh, presentation that that usually is here. But let's see let's see how it goes. So we're gonna drop right in. So when you have SSDs today. There's three main challenges for getting, if you want to get predictable latency from SSDs, you're out of luck. Um, so we can see that if we look at these graphs, which is, yeah, right in. And we see if you do today, if you do random reads from an SSD, your latency performance for when you read, well, that's good. But the thing is, with SSDs today and with the FTLs implemented, as soon as you start adding writes to your, to your SSD, your latency kind of starts to fluctuate. Well, OK, fair enough. Well, the thing is, and it just continues going up as you add more and more writes, like 50% writes. And at some point, your SSD is as slow as a normal drive. So that's one of the things. So there's no way to provide IO predictability of an SSD, and there's no way to provide IO isolation. So you cannot isolate reads from writes. So that's one of the challenges. The second challenge is that. There, when you look, go look at the storage interface for SSDs, there's log on log, there's indirects, and there's a narrow I.O. interface. By narrow I.O. interface, I mean there's read-write. You have nothing more. Of course, you have trim, but, but that's about it. So you don't know really what's going on within the SSD today. So what, what do I mean by log on log? What I mean is that so when you build have a host stack, a storage stack, we see that on the, in the top, in the user space, we have RocksDB, for example. So RocksDB has like a log structured database. Then inside the, the Linux kernel, or within the, the operating system kernel, we also have a log structured file system. And within the drive itself, we have an FTL, which is log structured. So we are actually doing three levels of the indirection going down the stack. And basically what that means is whatever I write up here, I, I don't have any clue where it's going to end up in the media. So what you really want to do here, like, that also means I have our extra garbage collection and so forth, so that you, if you could align what you did up here with the bottom, then you could get both reduced write amplification, but you can also remove the garbage collection that you would have to do, uh, which you then wouldn't have to do. The other problem is that when you write into an SSD, you don't write to the media, you write to a buffer. So what happens here is like the media and the SSD come in, caches the data that comes in, and, and the reads, they just go to the media. So even if you write to the SSD and you wait 10 seconds, well, you, are not, you, you don't get the guarantee that, that it won't happen right. So instead, you're kind of, well, you can characterize the SSD. And for this implementation, it behaves like that. And you can start building a model of it. But you cannot build that generic model on top of SSDs today. And basically, what, what this means, yeah, so the writes are decoupled from reads. And this both means that the data placement and the buffering, which you have up there, is like its best effort. But it also means that, yeah, that the, SSD, the host does not know anything about the SSD uh, and its internal state. So you cannot, yeah, you can build a model for that particular SSD, but you cannot do it for all SSDs. Right. And the reason that happens, so when we go look at the SSDs today, there's a host interface. We do read and write. There's a there's an AND interface or some other media interface as read, write, erase. And basically, what you have then is that you have 10 of these wired in parallel. So that's how they work today. And these medias, it's like read, it's like 50 to 100 microseconds, unless it's low latency NAND. Or it's write, it's like in milliseconds range. And erases in the same. And what you do then do within an SSD, this is, this is the media. And we can, we can characterize the media perfectly well. But we also have to do, manage these media constraints, the ECC, the rate, retention of the data that we have. And we also have to convert this interface, the read, write, erase, up to a read, write. So that's kind of the problems and why they're not easily solvable by having a more intelligent uh, firmware inside the SSDs day. So what we're doing with open SSDs is that we introduce a new interface. And this interface should allow us to have predictable I.O. So you know when you do writes to the drive, you know when you do reads. You have I.O. isolation, so you can separate read and writes. Uh, you have reduced the write amplification to make this to near one. 
And it also, made, also makes sure that you can do intelligent data-based decisions and I/O scheduling decisions. And while you do that, you also make the host aware of the state so you can actually know what you're doing because the host, the host knows where you want to go, but it has no way to communicate that to the SSD. Now you can build, put it together and you can make much better database uh, decisions. So the outline of the rest of the talk is that we have this open channel SSD interface called physical page addressing. We introduced the LightMM subsystem, that's for the Linux kernel, to how to drive open channel SDs. We introduced PBlock, which is that FTL on the host side uh, for open channel SDs, and we demonstrate that it works. So the physical page addressing interface for an overview gives you like there's, oops, there's, you expose the grammatory of the SSD. So instead of hiding it, now we expose it. So we are upfront about what we have. And this both means that we expose the physical geometry. This geometry doesn't necessarily need to be the physical dies on the SSD. It can be some logical organization. Uh, but it's up to the SSD vendor to manage this. It's performance numbers, how long does it take to do a read, write, erase from the media? And controller functionalities, does this controller support, support read, write, suspend, for example? Then we need a way, now that we have exposed the parallelism up to the host, now we need to expose it through an address space. So we lay out each, each die next to each other outside of this address space. And basically, we encode the geometry into it. So instead of exposing the linear address space that you have with a traditional SSD, we expose yeah, each of them. And you can write one of them, you have one unit that you use, but you can then write to access multiple of them in, in parallel. And that's where you actually get the throughput. And to enable that, uh, the, the third part, which is kind of enabling, is because of these two up here, then we have, like, have a, a new interface where you read, write, erase, and you can actually access multiple addresses in, the, in this uh, address space in parallel. So instead of doing LBA read or write uh, with an LBA plus a length, you can do give me LBA at an address from this die and this die and this die, and a data from it, and then bring it to band in one command. So basically, it's optimization. Instead of issuing three IOs, you can do it with one IO. So that's the overview of the interface today. And there's, of course, a lot of details, but in general, that's it. Uh, so what we do on the Linux side to enable this is that we have this LightNVM subsystem. So the NVMe device driver today has detection of open channel SSDs. It implements this interface. And it has uh, the LightNVM subsystem and which makes this generic layer that exposes this, fun expose this functionality. That means the geometry and the vector, the uh, IO interface. And I mean, so the vector and IO interface is if you want to go all the way and be very deterministic, there's nothing that, it, that prevents you from just exposing an SMR interface today and then use an open channel SD. So those two interfaces are very much alike. And then at last, so now we, we have read, write, arrays from, from the, the NVMe device driver. And now we need to make a decision. Do we want to do a normal read-write interface? Then we need an FTL. And in this case, we have PBlock. Uh, but you can also expose it up to the application. So if you have RocksDB, you can integrate directly uh, within the application without having an FTL between, and then have RocksDB uh, drive it. And then what we're doing then on the PBlock side, I mean, so where we introduce this host side fast transition layer. So this is your how you would do implement an FTL today, how you do it within SSDs. There's a mapping table that you manage. There's write buffering. Uh, we do a bunch of cool stuff to make it actually performant in the Linux kernel. Uh, we have error handling. Uh, so, so normally, when you have an SSD, your reads always succeed, and your writes always succeed. So on open channel SSDs, reads succeed, but writes can fail. So you need to manage that in the host. So write and erase, those, those can fail, and you basically you just need to remap it and write to somewhere else. But you need to take care of that. And you could hide this inside the firmware, but the reason we don't do it is because if we hide it in the firmware, we don't have any predictable IO anymore. So that's why we want to have the host manage it. And then, of course, since this PBlock and transition layer expose the read-write interface and this lock structure, we need some garbage collection to refresh the data and rewrite blocks and so forth. So Xenix is an SSD controller company. We uh, make chips, ASICs, and our, um, we have the Xenix Labs Open Channel SSD, which is an NVMe SSD, PCIe, then 3 by 8. And this particular card has 2 terabyte of uh, NAND memory. It's 16 channels. 
Uh, so P uses parallel units, so dies, with eight dies per channel. Uh, so this particular unit has like 128 parallel units, which, yeah, 128 dies. And it's a quad plane NAND and so forth and so forth. And there's some performance number for what each particular does. Like each parallel unit, each die, what's the performance characteristic of it? So what can this drive do? So just to give you an idea of what the performance is, if you go from 4K up to 256K and you add a bunch of parallelism into the device, we can roughly read uh, uh, 4 gigabyte per second. And by enough parallelism here, we can also do like roughly a gigabyte of 1.5, uh, roughly a million IOPS and a 1.5 if we clock it the right way. So it's a pretty fast controller. And, and even if we do random write where we cannot use the, the cache within the controller, we still go above 3 million, uh, um, three, 3 gigabytes per second. So that's really cool. And the latency is follows as it should be. Right, so this is your normal SSD. So what can you do with an open channel SSD that you cannot do with an open channel SSD, uh, with a normal SSD? What you can do is that, well, if I know something about the workload, if I know I'm only ever gonna write 400 megabytes per second, then normal SSD you would write to all the dies at the same time. With an open channel SSD you can say, I only need to write to, the, to eight of them. So what we show here is that we show, we do 256K write and we do a bunch of reads at the same time, Love a lot of parallelism, and we have two reference numbers. There's the, the write, we can write four gigabytes per second, and as we decrease the number of, of the dies that writes, we also decrease the write performance. The read performance is the same all the way through. Uh, and then what we then show is that the next part, let's mix these two. So you have 110 dies, you read from them all, you write to them all, and you get roughly two gigabytes per second of each of them. And then what we then can see is like when we increase those and we still write 800 megabytes or 400 megabytes per second with eight dies, then our, our latency and our read throughput is back to what it, where we want it to be, but we are still writing 400 megabytes per second and we are still doing it at really good average latency. So there's, there's still gonna be outliers, but just by this simple, the simple small thing, you can actually optimize for what you want to do. And then one, another thing we can do is that we can go in and say, well, well we can lay our data on the SSD and one has some active and none some non-active. So if you take your favorite NVMe SSD today and you have like the first slide, we saw, the second slide we saw, where if you have no, no writes, you, you have good latency. But as soon as you add writes, your latency percentile, so this percentile is from 95 uh, up to 99. And basically, yeah, so when you, when you then are able to actually spit them and put them to different places, then you cannot get predictable latency. So this is all for the open channel SD. And this has nothing to do with the controller. This is basically that you expose the parallelism of the device with this interface and enables you to do that. And the last thing we can do here is like we can look at multi-tenant workloads. And we can say, well, you have an NVMe SSD and you have an open channel SSD and you have two tenants. And basically, we have two, two workloads running in parallel. Normally, what happens on the normal SSD as you add these for two, four, and eight tenants, you get more and more latency outliers. So you have neighbors that have disturbs each other. On an open channel SSD, that's not going to happen because you can actually provide IO isolation. So in conclusion, um, this open channel SSD specification, this open source, is developed in the open. Uh, CNX Labs provides an open channel SD. There's other vendors that provide an open channel SD. It goes to Lidon booth B6 to have a closer look at open channel SD. Um, this, this is all, all developed in the open. So the open channels, the Light NVM subsystem has actually been available since Linux kernel 4.4. Uh, the user space library where you can, you can actually integrate an FTL within an application is from Linux kernel 4.11, which is released in a month. And then you have 4.12, where we put plug up. So you have the host side open source FTL, which you can start using. And that also means you can start hacking on it and contribute to it and evaluate it as you want to do. And so there's a lot of opportunities to optimize your workload, to, to make it do predictable I.O. to provide I.O. isolation and to uh, enable your workloads to actually be perform much better and uh, be much more consistent because you, when you know something about the workload, you can apply that and use it on top of your open channel SDs. And we have a lot of 
documentation available at lightnm.io. And come see LightOn, they have one, and can show off how it works. Thanks.